Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> this is an Xbox 360 controller. Uh, a genuine one from Microsoft, not a sponsor. And uh, today we're going to fix it. So, let's get on with it. So yes, uh, as mentioned, this is an Xbox 360 controller. And as I said, it is a genuine Microsoft one. Uh, it's got the thing on it, not a sponsor, as I said. Um, this is an Xbox 360 controller, so it's old. Uh, my son uses this on his PC for playing various games. I don't know exactly what he's playing with it, but anyway. The problem is um, the wire, the cable is had it. I don't know if you can actually, how well you can see that, but it's absolutely shot. And you can probably tell there are like quite a lot of bits of insulating tape and things on it. And he came to me the other day and he said, do we have any more of these? And I said, no. Um, used to have loads of them, but they've all just broken over the years and been recycled. Uh, and this is the last of them. And uh, so he said that the wire was playing up and um, could I fix it? And I said, well, not really, uh, aside from replacing the wire. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. So I've got here a wire that I bought from uh, somewhere, Amazon. Um, and uh, there's a little cat on the bag, which I thought was quite cute. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're going to basically replace this, that wire with this one. So let's uh, let's get on with it. So the first thing I want to do is unwrap this cable because we need to get this out of the way. Right. So uh, there are six screws that hold the clamshell together. I say there are six screws. Looking at it for a moment, there are actually six screw holes, but there are only three screws. <laughs> I suspect my son has had this apart, um, which I will be having words with him about. Uh, let me find a appropriate screwdriver. Right, they look like they're a number one Phillips. So let's, oh yeah. So I shall take out the three remaining screws and try not to lose them because we have only got three. Well, I have to say, judging from the state of these screws, I suspect he has had them out and he's over tightened them when he's put them back in and pulled the threads out of it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, now we need to get this clamshell apart. I must admit, it's been a very, very long time since I took a 360 controller apart. Uh, always use this pry bar or chisel. Um, now, how does this come apart? Does it just. I get the feeling I'm going to do this and there's going to be buttons and things pinging everywhere. Uh, I have to say, I might give this a clean while it's apart because it's moderately disgusting inside. What on earth is going on here? Right, that's broken. And covered in white tack. Definitely going to be having words with the child. I don't care if he's nearly 18, he is still the child. Oh, oh, all the buttons have fell out. Knew that was going to happen. Uh, right, let's... Uh, these back in because yeah I think I should have taken it apart upside down but never mind uh, oh god now I've got to remember which way the buttons go right that goes to the top although I actually do these only go in one way I've got a sneaking suspicion these only go in one way yeah they do <laughs> just as well because otherwise we'd have been here all day I'd have been looking at pictures online of <laughs> where the buttons go but yes they are actually keyed and they're only going one way um, I've just realized that I know why he's taking this apart now you'll notice there are no rumble motors in here he's taken the rumble motors out of it all right fair enough that's fine uh, now 
Let's just lift that off for a minute. Uh, now, how does this board come out? Does it just lift out? I think it just lifts out. Oh. Oh, come on, out you come. Oh, because the triggers come out with it. Okay, that's fine. Right, so hopefully, yes, there is our connector. Let's just, can we just pop that off? Because it's a Molex connector and I don't want to break it. Oh, hang on. Is that soldered? Ooh, okay, the plot thickens. I think that cable is actually soldered on. Uh, hang on, let me get the new one. I've never done this before, so we'll open our little cat bag. Because I thought it was just a case of like just plug in the connector and be done with it, but I suspect possibly not. Uh, oh, no. No, look. I don't know if you can see that. There are pins on the connector. Right, actually, let's just check first of all this is the right cable. Uh, so that needs to go that way up. And indeed, it is different. Uh, so here, if you look, uh, pointer. So on here, we have red, white, green, black. On this one, the new one, we have red, white, green, space, black. So we're going to need to move that pin over. Oh, okay. It should still work though. I say the rest of it looks the same. So it should be alright. Okay. Um, Right, so I'm going to have to desolder these connectors now, aren't I? Oh. Right, give me a minute to get the solder nice up. Oh, I just thought of something. <laughs> you just wait a minute. I'll be back in a second. Right, uh, hopefully you can still see this all right. I've set this up in my um, circuit board clamp. I actually bought this thing to hold the frames of, of model cars. <laughs> but this is what it's actually designed for. So what we need to do is we need to desolder these four pins here. Uh, and the problem is there are four of them. And the problem is with that is you, you melt one, you move on to the next one, the first one dries, you can't get out. So that's where this comes in. This is the solder sucker. <laughs> I think I actually did a video on this once before. It's a fantastic bit of kit. It's basically um, uh, a vacuum pump. So what you do is you push the handle down and you hear that click and you see that's down like that. When you push the button, that just pops up. And this little nozzle on the end here, what you do is you put that next to the thing you want to desolder. When the solder melts, you pop it and it sucks the solder up. So let's see how well it works. I have used it before and it did work surprisingly well. So let's see if we can replicate that success. To be fair, I have not used this thing in a very long time. Right, here we go. Oh, hang on, where are my glasses? I don't know if I can see what I was doing. Right, solder sucker begin. Uh, I hope you can see this. We'll, we'll see, um, let me just turn that, actually, let's just tip that back a little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to see it a bit better. Right, so. So you put that next to the thing you want to desolder and then you and there you go you see it sucks the solder off <laughs> oh this thing is brilliant i can't remember how much i paid for this but it was well worth every penny just for the hilarity of it if nothing else right <laughs> let's do the next one
sometimes you have to do it twice because it um, it doesn't quite get all of it. Although I think that's probably about as good as it's going to get. See, sometimes it will leave a little bit behind, and you know, but you know, you just have to do what you can with it. I say these things are soldered by a machine; they're not meant to be not meant to be worked on like this. Right, it's left quite a lot behind on that one. Let's try it again. That's got a bit more of it off. See, the other, there are plenty of ways you can get solder off of things. You can also use um, a wick. I might use a wick and try and get the re remainder of that off. Oh, get in there. So that's got most of it off, but let me show you another way. So this is a desoldering wick. And it's basically just like a wire, it's like braided wire. And uh, what you do is you put a bit of uh, flux on it and then you put it onto the uh, solder, heat it up and it wicks the solder up into it. Uh, let me show you and see how well this one works. It might do to get the rest of that out. Uh, solder and paste which we're going to need in a minute anyway. So what I have found with this sometimes it's better to actually cut a piece off and use it because what happens a lot of the time as I have found much to my chagrin is you end up burning your fingers on it because it's copper and it gets really hot really quick. So let's get a pair of tweezers to hold it and let's say we'll put a bit of flux on it just to help it draw in the uh, the solder. Right, and now, I don't know, oh, there you go, I've, I've soldered it to it, there you go. <laughs> but I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's actually started, um, the, the solder just like draws up into the, into the wire. It's quite difficult to see here because there's so little of it left, but that is what it's doing. Right, there's a nice bit there that I want to get rid of. Oh. Let me snip the end of that off and try again. But like I say, I found if you actually hold this stuff in your fingers, it gets really hot and ends up burning your fingers. Right. Oh, that is so infuriating. That's got it. Right, there's a bit on there as well. Because seriously, the most of this we can get off, the better, because otherwise it'll be an absolute nightmare trying to get this thing off. It only needs a little bit of solder to just hold on and it won't, um, the pins won't come out. But I think we've got most of it. Now, the next thing we need to do is try and get this out of this uh, Molex connector. All right. Is that the whole thing? I think the whole thing just pops out, actually. I think we might just need a little, little bit of brute force and ignorance. it was going to be so like I say what we need to do now is um, change this wire on here so that the pin out matches this one uh, 
Right, let's have a look at this. So what we need to do is lift up, there's a little, a little plastic tab there. We need to lift that up and then pull the wire out, which is gonna be hilarious. Uh, what can we lift that up with? I need something small and pointy. This might be a bit big. This is just a braddle. But there might be enough just to lift that up a bit. And Oh, yeah, there we go. I think we got it. Yep, that was easy enough. And we slide it over one, push it back in until it clicks. Job's a good one. Right, now, I'm wondering if there's like two types of controller wire or whether this was just literally one that was made incorrectly. Um, now, I can't remember which way around that goes now. <laughs> uh, let me flip it back up. Is the black one. Yeah, it goes that way around. Yeah, I was right. I was right. What I was thinking. <laughs> I just got myself confused with it. I mean, if worst case, I just rewind the footage and watch it. But uh, right, yeah. So it goes like that. Okay, let's flip that back over. Okay, so that needs to go on like that. And we pop those in the hole. And that should, that's it, click into place like that. Now, technically, that should work. I think the solder is a bit kind of belt and braces just to make sure it stays in place. Right, let's just loop that there so make that sure that doesn't come out. Right, now, we need to solder these because they're like little spring-loaded pins. Let's solder this back on. So we'll put some solder and paste across there, like that, and ironically the soldering paste and the solder all came from China, so <laughs> this is all um, this is all just going back the way it was basically. All right, that's one. That's two. That's three. And that is four. Right. So, hopefully that will work. Uh, we can put this back together now. Let me get this clamp out of the way and then we'll put it back together. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to give these some of this a bit of a wipe out because, yeah, it's a bit of an alcohol on a swab and just try and get rid of some of this. Oh, God, that is vile. Oof. Ew. <laughs> Alright, that's got the worst of the guff out of it. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, right, so now let's see if we can get this back together. So we want to get the triggers back in. And we've got to get this bit in as well. Oh. See, the problem is here is the wire on this, like the exposed wire, is longer than it was on the other one, which is not ideal, but never mind. Also, does that actually fit in there? Uh, where's the old wire? Let me have a look at that. No, that is the same. 
Oh, wait, hang on, am I putting that in the wrong place? Yeah, I am. Ah, that's why. It's because that needs to go in like that. That's it. That's how it goes. Oh, yeah, that's better. Right, now we've got to try and finagle this back into place. Uh, which is going to be easier said than done. That's it, right, that's where that's meant to go, like that. Now, we need to turn this upside down. Uh, oh, this is gonna be fun, isn't it? Right, let's get this bit. Try and put all these busted bits back in. Yeah, as I say, I shall be having words with number one offspring about this. Okay. Now this bit goes uh, that way round. Like that. Now this is going to be the awkward bit, although hopefully we can just pop that on top of there like that. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now we need to take this, let's just pop that down for a minute, turn this over and drop it back onto here. like that. Got it. Oh, that wasn't terrible. Okay, now we can put the screws back in. I think there was one in this one. Uh, screwdriver. Not sure that's really holding it together. Oh, oh good grief. And there was one in here. And I think the other one was in the middle here. Not sure that one's doing a great deal. Let's take that one out for a second. Oh, I think it was in that one. Yeah, that's because that's not doing anything in there. The trouble is, again, because it's so old, the plastic's gone brittle, and uh, the the little standoffs that these screws go into have um, basically fallen apart. So that screw really isn't doing a great deal. So there is actually only two screws holding this together. So, but uh, yes, that's all back together. I shall go and return it to the offspring and see what he thinks of it. And then I shall report back. Right, well, um, I took it in, he's giving it a go, and it apparently works, so he's happy. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> here is our finished article. Um, I know it's a bit of an odd one, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. You might have learned something, I don't know. Um, so yeah, as ever, I'd like to take a moment to thank my top tier patrons, uh, Howard, Amy, and the anonymous Tosh for their continued support, much appreciated. And um, if you'd like to come and join us on Patreon, you're of course more than welcome. And if not, you're also welcome to come and join us in the Staff Canteen on Facebook. So yeah, hopefully a few of you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.